It's been about three weeks since I filmed a video like this, but I'm ready to get back into it. I just kind of let the holidays go by, focused on kind of like my, my vlogging part of my channel. But the second half of free agency is starting to heat up. I'm also rocking my Bulls jersey right now because I'm filming this currently during halftime. Uh, got the Bulls game right over here. Uh, they've been playing hot pretty recently. The date of recording is January 12th. There was a lot of stuff to report today, but there will be a second video uploaded shortly after this one because I wanted to put it in two separate videos because there was so much to talk about. So the reason why you clicked on this video was probably the Cubs highlight of the big moves that they finally made. We're gonna be reporting two different moves the Cubs made over the last three days. Was signing a new lefty pitcher that's gonna help out their starting rotation big time and making a trade for a top prospect from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Getting it started for us, the first thing to report today is the big one, probably why you clicked on this video. Cubs to sign Shoto Imanaga to a four year $53 million deal with a team option to extend the contract to a fifth year, which will give him a grand total of an $80 million contract. My personal opinion on this, just to get it started, I love seeing this move. The most recent video I posted was a vlog and I actually gave my live reaction to this signing. I made a little video this past Tuesday, which was I think the 9th. Later that night, the day I was filming, I picked up my phone one minute after I saw the news article, Cubs to sign Shoto Imanaga. I picked up my phone and that was literally my live reaction. I was so ecstatic. I was so happy that the Cubs finally did something. And I don't think this will be their only free agent signing, but it's a very good start. So let's kind of get in depth a little bit more of this contract. One thing I find very interesting, reports say that Shoto Imanaga has been staying in Chicago since Christmas. And that just goes to show how under the radar Jed Hoyer likes to work. So Imanaga, who is 30 years old, has a career record of 64 and 50 with a 3.18 ERA in his eight seasons over in Japan. According to reports, there was one other team heavily in on Imanaga. They were willing to like basically double the salary to sign him and he ended up choosing Chicago. No matter what team, if a player says that about your organization, that's gotta feel good. Today, Friday, January 12th, the Cubs introduced Shota Imanaga today at a press conference. I watched it live. Here was the first thing that he said on stage. Hey, Chicago. <laughs> what do you say? Cubs gonna win today. Oh, he's got a good voice. Watching him during the press conference was just really great to see. He will wear number 18, just a little side note in there. He was actually inspired to wear that number because he was looking into Cubs history and Ben Zobrist winning the World Series MVP just had an impact on him and that is ultimately why he wanted to wear number 18 for the Cubs. But he's a nice lefty arm to already add to the Cubs rotation with Justin Steele, Jamison Tyon, Kyle Hendricks, Jordan Wicks. I definitely see him being the third spot in the rotation because you start off with Ace, Justin Steele, who's a lefty, and then you go to Jamison Tyon, who's righty, and then go back to a lefty being uh, Imanaga. That's kind of how I think Craig Council will design the rotation, but we'll just have to see. That's his job, and I, I trust him. Basically, I think I kind of said everything I wanted to say just off the bat. I love this move. I'm super excited. I should probably stop right there because the next move that I will be talking about might be a lengthy one, and that is Chicago Cubs trade for number two prospect from the Los Angeles Dodgers in third base, Michael Bush, and getting right-handed pitcher Yancy Almonte. So the Cubs with this trade are one, fortifying their bullpen, which they really need help with. That was one of the shortcomings that we dealt with last season. So anyways, Almonte is a nice pickup as well in this trade. So yes, the Cubs are fortifying their bullpen needs and fortifying a key prospect for their future. It's been no surprise, ever since the Cubs traded away Chris Bryant, who was already starting to go to the outfield, the Cubs have struggled to find a player to go to the hot corner. Last year, they shared time with Christopher Morrell, who was pretty good, but he DH'd a lot. He was not the main third baseman. They shared time with Nick Madrigal and Patrick Wisdom, and they are two polar opposites. Wisdom does not hit for any you know, batting average, he only hits for power. Nick Madrigal 
hits for basically no power, a pretty good, you know, decent batting average, and his glove did improve a lot playing third. That was a new position for him, but he just doesn't have the strongest arm to play over there at third. So Michael Bush, who played most of his minor league career at second base, when he got called up to play a little bit for the Dodgers, they used him mainly at third. He is capable of playing first base, and he did test out left field a little bit as well. Well, Cubs don't really need a left fielder unless Ian Happ like somehow got injured. Obviously, to acquire a guy like Michael Bush, the Cubs did have to give up a good prospect themselves. Cubs did have to give up pitching prospect Jackson Ferris and outfield prospect Zaire Hope. I think that's how you pronounce it. Michael Bush is a lefty power bat who did get his first taste of the majors in this past season. In 98 games for Triple A, Bush hit a 323 batting average with 27 homers, 26 doubles, and 90 RBIs. He also has a well-rounded plate discipline, posting an 18.8 strikeout rate to go along with a 13.9 walk rate. Of course, like I already mentioned, to get a guy like Michael Bush from the Dodgers, the Cubs, of course, had to give up a pretty good prospect of their own, and that is pitching prospect Jackson Ferris. He ranked number eight of MLB Pipeline's top 30 for the club, of course, on a prospect list. He was drafted in 2022, and he had a solid pro debut with single A Myrtle Beach last year. He had a 3.38 ERA with 77 strikeouts in 56 innings. I didn't really find myself being as distraught as a lot of other Cubs fans were to give up a prospect like Jackson Ferris. Anyways, that wraps up basically all the news I have for you today. If you clicked on this video because you're a Cubs fan specifically, then I hope you enjoyed the video, but also I think it, I, I wanted to kind of give perspective of people that are, you know, trying to get really hyped for the season or just kind of have an idea of what the season will look like. These are just like my takes on it. These are just like literally my opinions and my thoughts. Really, really exciting stuff. And these moves happen literally within two and a half days, three days, okay? It went Tuesday and Thursday, like all in a short amount of time. Uh, the Cubs did really nothing other since November 6th, okay? Which was uh, the, you know, Cubs correct council to literally January 9th. There was nothing. There was just rumors and everything and disappointment. The next video I will be covering um, Marcus Stroman ditching the Cubs and signing with a new team. Another reliever, a uh, big signing. I'm, I'm excited to note those. I will be filming that in the next video. I just didn't want a huge long 20 minute video. I'd rather kind of break it right in half and cover two different things. Also, it feels good to be back making my baseball videos. I'm sure you guys, if you subscribe for my baseball content, I've just been focusing on like the Christmas stuff and everything going on. Um, but I'm ready to get back into it. So yeah, feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see the very next video that I do post. And there are going to be a lot more videos coming up. Um, here in just about a month, I'm going to be doing a grading for every single MLB off season. I'm going to be doing standing predictions for the coming 2024 season. Just a lot of fun videos. I'm so excited to film. So yeah, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. I'm super excited. Anyways, um, yeah, comment down below, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.